the news tonight. I'm Roy Sendrix. Thanks for joining us. Tonight's headlines are powered by top brands. Behind these prison walls, prison warden busted with weed and cigarettes at New Amsterdam prison. Man in custody as police probe suspected arson following Enmore fire and fire rips through Ansgrove home. News in depth begins now. A prison officer attached to the New Amsterdam prison is currently in police custody after he allegedly admitted to smuggling marijuana and cigarettes into the prison. Acting head of prisons Gladwin Sambas today said a prison officer was taken into police custody after 1,032 grams of suspected marijuana and 39 packets of cigarettes were found in the prison. Sam Wells said from video evidence the officer was seen in possession of the parcels that came over the fence. He then conspired with prisoners to secure the same in the prison kitchen. The director acting of prison said a middle manager acting on the information received and caused the search to be conducted and the items were found. Sam Wells said the man during a telephone interview allegedly admitted to his involvement and said that the items were to be delivered to a specific prisoner. More news after this break. Stay with us. Hey, looky there. Let me go to techie boots. Boots? No, mama, mama. I ain't gonna get lack of teeth in a big stinking 30 second hand boots. Plus, it can be more cheaper online. And, don't got my favorite color pink. Let me go, lad. Online shopping. Cheaper, faster, better. Pass back. Caribbean rice from the lush rice fields of Guyana straight to your home. Caribbean rice, our people, our rice. Welcome back. A young man is in police custody as a police probe a suspected arson committed at a house at lot 351 Hope South and more on the east coast of Damarara. The two-story house was completely gutted in a late night fire on Tuesday. Bhagwan Singh who owns the property said his losses are in the millions and said he's still unclear as to what transpired. No carry a big glass here and it's stressing me out right now. Well, I'll tell you to be honest, true that uh, I was I was living I wasn't living with him, but the people who living upstairs I don't know the problem because they used he used to live downstairs and the person used to live upstairs so I don't know a problem if they have any problem. But nothing is safe in this building. Nothing is safe, nothing. Everything one flat down. His son lives in the bottom flat of the building, and a family shares the upper flat. There are reports that a 25-year-old suspect was a heavy drinker, and this was confirmed by his father. He's drink, he's drink plenty every day. He's drink every day. I don't know what he's smoking. I hear people say he's smoke, but I don't know. I never see him. I heard the news last night. I hear somebody come and tell me the place burning down. I got a son who live here, and I got some, I got some Negro people living upstairs. And the thing burned down. I don't know who burned it. Singh said the house was given to him by his father some years ago.
Millions went up in flames in an early morning fire at Ansgrove on the east coast of the Marara. Reportedly, no one was at home at the time of the fire. Neighbors said a passerby raised the alarm and they immediately called the Guyana Fire Service, while they also formed a bucket brigade. Osafa Fraser, who lives across the street from the fire, said it was just around 5 this morning when the fire started. He said he was forced to move his belongings from his house as the fire threatened to spread to his house. I saw that um, when I get up this morning, a lady was passing and she had a fire fire and these kind of things. So when I get up, I see over there in the house, you see the glare and everything. But when we rushed over there, I couldn't get in. The place was grilled up and so on, so I couldn't get in to give access to extinguish a fire there. Residents commended members of the Guyana Fire Service for containing the fire to the lone house. The fire service did an excellent job this morning around 5.30 when they came. This house was already on blaze. And this one right here, they had to save this one. And I had to come out and save mine over there before this one over here started to catch fire also. But anything, congratulations to the fire service one more time. They did an excellent job. The building is owned by Elaine Pollard, who resides overseas. Residents said a caretaker would normally come to turn the lights on and off at the house. And that's a wrap for this edition of News In Depth. Do join us again same time tomorrow for another edition.